It all leads us to Alan Hahn's Knicks fix. Al Troutwick back on the Chase Bridge. James Harden in the garden tonight, Alan. He gets criticized for a lot of things, taking bad shots, flopping, uh, not playing defense. What does Mike D'Antoni say about that? Yeah, well, he, he defends the defense part, if, if you want to put it that way. It's something he don't want to hear about the defense. The flopping, the shots, all that other stuff. It's amazing for a guy who is an MVP and a candidate to win it again is someone that gets so much criticism. And Mike D'Antoni doesn't want to hear about the defense. So this is last week after they played the Lakers. Take a look at this. So every once in a while, he'll take a playoff and they'll zoom in, meaning, of course, the haters. And you can do that for every player in the NBA if you wanted to. That's just a narrative that you want to make. Now, I mean, there's plenty of video evidence to suggest that James Harden is not a great defensive player. But, you know, he is someone that will take charges. He does often match up against the other team's weaker offensive player. But he's also scoring 40 points a night, so it's not as if you're asking him to do so much at one end. He will rest on the defensive end. His defensive rating is the lowest it's been in a couple of years now. It's 111, which last year was 105, but that could also be the impact felt by losing two very important wing defenders in Mabute and also uh, Trevor Ariza and Chris Paul not being there and now Clint Capella as well. So try to use numbers, whatever you want. Mike D'Antoni doesn't want to hear it. In fact, he says they're trying to find something he's not Superman at and they're having a hard time. I think his defense has been underrated for a while. I wouldn't go that far. Speaking of defense, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Frank Nielakina tonight. It's something I'm really looking forward to watching, and it's something that actually I look back to last year. Remember, early in the season, the Rockets were in town, and James Harden was here, and Frank Nielakina as a rookie. Check this out. A little shutdown action there. Not falling for some of the fakes. Look at the strip here. Nielakina had the crowd excited. Now, last game here at the Garden on Monday afternoon. Check this out. Ending the first quarter. Paul George went for 13 in the first quarter, and Frank Nielakina turns the water off. This is the last possession, forces a bad shot, and these are those moments we watch. Russell Westbrook, end of the half. Same thing, possession, Nielakina, perfect defense, and closing out, and that's what turns into this. I call him one of the most polarizing players the Knicks have right now among the fan base because you have these moments like this where he is known to be a defensive player. This is who he wants to be. I talked to him early in the season. He told me that I have the mentality and I have the ability to be an elite defender. It's what he wants to be. It's just we aren't seeing it consistently, whereas offensive players will shoot poorly, and maybe you'll say one game or two games they'll shoot better, and then you'll look forward to it like a Kevin Knox. There's no stats really you can put out there for a guy like Neil Aquina. There's just moments like that that we just showed you that I think we look forward to. So tonight, let's see, against the best scorer in the NBA today, how will Neil Aquina do? I hope he gets the chance to face him again. What do you make of the Chicago Bulls trading for Carmelo Anthony? This is something, isn't it? Like how Carmelo Anthony has gone from when he was here in New York to being the star player to now he's with his fourth franchise and not for long. Uh, that in the last six months, and you think about the trade uh, that the Thunder made in July and sending him to the Atlanta Hawks, and the Hawks basically just waved him. And then he was he signs with the uh, with uh, the Houston Rockets. He plays 10 games. It just didn't work out there. It was an awkward move, really, if you think about it. They sent him away, and now the Rockets need to. Uh, create a roster spot to bring in uh, Kenneth Fareed to fill in. They need an extra big, so they end up trading him to the Bulls. Now, coincidentally, the Bulls wanted to sign him a couple of years ago, but the Bulls aren't even going to play him either. They plan on either trading him or waiving him before the February 7th trade deadline. So Carmelo Anthony has been actually here in New York working out, training, and waiting for his opportunity to actually get back on a basketball court and play and see if he can be part of a playoff team. The one team out there, the Lakers, that's that's continually been the one team a lot of people think he will end up with. The Lakers don't have a roster spot now. They'd have to create one if they want to sign him. But Melo, think about it, has been with four franchises since the summer, and he's only played for one of them in that time. Incredible where his career is right now. And the question, of course, is, is this the last time we'll see him in the NBA? And if it is, Hall of Fame credentials, I'm saying yes. Okay, time for the stat of the night. Now, we've been talking about James Harden all night, so why not a great stat on James Harden? Over the last 23 games, he's averaging 40.2 points per game, and that matches Kobe Bryant for the longest, third longest streak in the NBA for a 40-point average, a 40-point game. Elgin Baylor once averaged 40 over 33 games. How about this? The record is held by, no surprise, Wilt Chamberlain. 
He averaged 40 points per game over 515 games. That's a record that will never be broken.